Hello and welcome to the video. It's Matthew here and we're looking at question 6 which is worth 30 marks. So we're shown the circle C in the diagram with centre O and the points A, B and D lying on the circle. We're told line A, B is a diameter of the circle. So let's have a look at A part 1 now and that wants us to write down the angle ADB which is the size of the total angle at the point D. Now be careful here as some of the angle has been marked with an X up here. However, we're tasked to find the size of the total angle, not just the size of the angle X. So it's the total angle from here to here. So be careful there and try not to let the X throw you off as if the angle is going to be greater than just the angle of size X. Now the first thing I'm going to draw in here is I'm going to draw in the triangle ADB. So I'm going to create a triangle in the circle. So now we can clearly see that we have a triangle in ADB we're trying to work out the size of the angle at D, which I've marked with the pink line there. So you may be familiar with Theorem 19, which is on the Leaving Certificate Math Syllabus. And I'm going to show you what Theorem 19 is now. And that will help us figure out the size of the angle ADB. So Theorem 19 says the angle at the centre of a circle standing on a given arc is twice the angle at any point of the circle standing on the same arc. So I know that's very wordy. So I'm going to just do a quick sample now. So there's my circle with center O. And I'm now going to draw two angles in that will look something like this. So there's my circle with center O. And I'm now going to show you what theorem 19 means. So now I have two angles, X and Y. These are both standing on the same arc as they're both connected to the same two points here and here. As they're both connected to the same points, that means they're standing on the same arc and theorem 19 holds. So that would mean in this circle here, the angle at Y is twice the angle of X. So that's what theorem 19 tells us. Now a corollary of theorem 19 is this. If a triangle has the diameter of a circle as one of its sides, as Orwin does, and the third vertex, and vertex is just another word for a point, of the triangle is any point on the circumference, then the triangle will always be a right angle. So we're using theorem 19, and the corollary of theorem 19 is this, and I'm going to go back to our question now to explain it with the example of the question. So if you have a triangle with one of its sides as the diameter of a circle, which we do, Remember, the side AB is a diameter of the circle, as we're told up here. So that means this side here is the diameter of the circle. Then that triangle will be a right-angled triangle. And that's the corollary of theorem 19, or it's a corollary, I should say, of theorem 19. So obviously, this angle here and this angle here are not 90 degrees. So that must mean that the angle up here is 90 degrees. So in that case, we can say that the angle ADB is 90 degrees. And that's our answer for A part 1, and that was worth 5 marks. So if you aren't familiar with the theorems and the corollaries, I do recommend going back over them, as they can really help you with questions such as this. So now let's have a look at A part 2, and this tells us that the angle AOD is 130 degrees. So now we have to work out the size of the angle marked X. So I told you before, try not to get distracted by the X. Now we have to work out what X is. So the first thing I'm going to say is that the angle here is equal to 130 degrees, as we're told. We know that AB is a straight line. So that means in total, this angle here should be 180 degrees. So I'm going to call this angle here Y. As we know that 130 plus Y should equal 180 degrees, as there are 180 degrees in a straight line. So to work out Y, I'm just going to take away 130 from both sides. And obviously 130 minus 130 is 0. So on the left hand side I'm left with y, then 180 minus 130 is simply 50. So that angle there that I labelled y is equal to 50 degrees. So now I have to work out the size of the angle x. And now the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to mark in another triangle, and this time it's the triangle ODB. Don't worry, we're not going to use the same theorem again, it's going to be a different rule this time. And the triangle ODB looks something like that. Now one thing that we can say is that the distance from the center of a circle to any point on the circle is equal to the radius. And here, the center of the circle is O, and we're told that at the start of the question. So that means the distance from O to A, from O 
to B and from O to D is all equal to the radius. So that means that in this particular question here, that O to B, which is this side here, is equal to the distance from O to D, which is right here. So that means that this triangle here is an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, the two angles at the base, so that's going to be where the X is and this side over here, will be equal. So basically, the two pink angles there that I've marked will be the same. So whatever X is, it's also equal to this angle over here, which I'm also going to mark as X, and they will be the same, because it's an isosceles triangle. The same way two sides are the same, two angles are also the same, and it's those two angles there. So it's not the angle that's between the two sides that are equal, it's the other two angles at the base. So we know, of course, in a triangle, there's 180 degrees. We know that one side is going to be 50, and the two other sides are both x, as they're both the same. So let's solve that now using algebra. So we can add x and x together, and x plus x is obviously 2x. So that gives us 50 plus 2x is equal to 180. And then I'm going to take away 50 on both sides, and obviously 50 minus 50 is 0, so I'm left with 2x is equal to 180 minus 50, which is 130. So now I have to work out what x is. I don't want 2x, I just want 1x. So to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So just a bit of a hint, whenever you have a number with an x, so for example 2x is equal to some other number, and you just want the x value, not the 2x value, just divide both sides by 2. So 2x divided by 2 is x, and 130 divided by 2 is 65 degrees. So therefore, x is equal to 65 degrees. And that's our answer for A part 2, and it was worth 5 marks. Now let's have a look at A part 3. And here we're told that the radius of the circle is 18 centimetres, and now we have to find the length of the arc AD, giving our answer in centimetres in terms of pi. So let's have a look. So the length of the arc AD is this arc here. Now, as the question di didn't specify if it was the minor arc, which is the arc I've marked, or the major arc, which would be this mark here, it gave you full marks regardless if you used the minor arc, which is the pink arc, or the major arc, which is the yellow arc, as long as you got one of them. I'm going to just find the minor arc, because I think that's the one they intended people to find, they just weren't clear enough. It's the exact same method for the yellow mark, except the angle we use would be different. So let's find the length of the minor arc of AD now. So luckily, we have a formula in the formula tables book for the length of an arc. So here it is on page 9, and this is the formula right here. So the length of the arc is equal to 2 times pi times by the radius times by the angle, so that's theta, but you just put in the angle for theta, divided by 360 degrees. So let's have a look. So we are told that the radius is 18, so we just need to find out now what theta is, the angle. So theta is the angle between both points, so that's between A and D, and we can clearly see here that the angle between A and D is 130 degrees. So now popping this into the formula, we get 2 times pi times by 18 times by 130 over 360. So now we can pop this into our calculator and see what we get. So 2 times pi, and to get pi you click shift, and then this multiplied by 10 to the power of x button down here, as the pi is in yellow just above it, and then you get 2 pi times by 18 times by 130 over 360, and you get 13 pi. It told us to keep our answer in terms of pi, so we'll keep our answer as 13 pi centimeters. Now that was to get the minor arc, which was the smaller arc that I marked with pink at the start. To get the major arc, you would do a similar thing, except your angle would be the other side, which I'll just show you now. So your angle would instead be this angle here, which I'm sure you could work out as 230 degrees, as of course there are 360 degrees in a full circle, so taking away the 130 there, and you're left with 230 degrees. So you would just put in 230 instead of 130, and you will get your answer for the major arc, which should be 23 pi centimeters. So they said they get, they get full marks regardless of which arc you found, the minor arc or the major arc. That's our answer for A part 3, and that was worth 10 marks. Now let's have a look at part B. So part B shows us two statements, and we have to say if they're true or false. So let's have a look at statement A first. And this says if two triangles are similar, then they must be congruent. So before we explain this, or before we answer this, I'm just going to give you the definition for similar triangles and congruent triangles, okay? So this isn't the reason, this is just a definition before we actually answer the question. And I'm going to do similar triangles first. So two triangles are similar if the three angles are the same. So the lengths of the sides of the triangle do not need to be the same but the angles themselves must always be the same. So I'm just going to do a few examples of that now. 
So both of these triangles on screen here are similar as they all have the same angles. Now clearly one of them is bigger than the other but that does not matter as the sides do not need to be the same. The Only the angles need to be the same. That's all. So that means both of these triangles are similar but they are not congruent and I'll explain why they're not congruent in a second as um, congruent is when triangles are the exact same angles and sides. So that's the definition for similar triangles. Now let's see what congruent triangles are. So this time in congruent triangles, all sides and angles are equal. They're all the same in both triangles, okay? So just to draw an example of that now. So both of these triangles are actually congruent. So if you count the sides, you'll see that this is equal to three units. This is also equal to three units down here. So that means that side's equal with that side. We can also say that this side here is six units. That's equal to that. We know that there's 90 degrees in here and 90 degrees in here. So them two angles are equal, which means that Pythagoras' theorem must hold and the opposite side must also be equal to each other. So both of these sides are the same. And if you measure the angles, you will also find that this angle is equal to this angle and that this angle is equal to this angle. So the two purple angles, the two x's and the two 90 degrees are equal and all sides are also the same. So even though they're not facing the same way, they don't have to be. They have the same sides and the same angles, so therefore they are congruent. So now I've explained what congruent and similar triangles are. So let's see if the statements are true or false. So the first statement is that if two triangles are similar, then they must be congruent. Well, that isn't true. And I actually showed you why it isn't true when I done my explanation for the similar triangles. As I had two triangles that had the same angles, but where one of them was clearly bigger than the other. That meant while it had the same angles, it didn't have the same sides, and therefore it was not congruent. So the reason is, a tri two triangles could have the same angles, but one of them could be larger or smaller than the other, therefore it would not be congruent. So that's your answer for B part 1. Now let's have a look at B part 2, and this says that if two triangles are congruent, then they must be similar. Well, this is true. As I explained before, congruent triangles are two triangles where all sides are equal, and all angles are equal in both. So because all angles are always equal in both in congruent triangles, that means that they're also similar. The reason is that congruent triangles are triangles with all sides and angles the same. As all angles measure the same, they are also similar. B parts one and two were worth a combined 10 marks. And it was also the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.